Once again, thank you. Welcome to the third section of um, Why Africa Cannot Face Itself. We've looked at some critical questions that we need to answer in, in session one. And in session two, we look at why geography is, is important. Geography matters. So we're going to continue. But before we continue, I'm going to take you through some of our books that are available that might be of interest to you. We have a book, Profitable Pig Farming, the step-by-step -step guide to farming, pig farming in Africa. And uh, we also have what the ancient African name and how their work influenced modern life. I said that this book is very important to any parent that have children under the age of 12 to 25. Your child should buy one for your child and you should read it because it will prepare your child for the world that is going to go. Most of you that are diaspora, you already know that your sons are being challenged with history that they don't have history and you that are in Africa I'm sure your children are going to leave the shore of Africa for, for positive reasons either to for their education or to go and work in other parts of the world all other countries all other cultures of man have realized the importance of their history the Jewish the Jewish the the, the, the Chinese and the Indians have realized the importance of their culture and they've taught their children their history so the children can stand tall Wherever they are, we need to do the same for our children. This is not a time for us to say we don't like our language. We only want our children to speak English. That time has gone far beyond. If you go, if you travel outside your country, your continent, you discover that every other people are very proud. You see the Asian, they teach their children how to speak their language. You see the Chinese, they teach their children how to speak their language. The Korean, the same. So it's very important for we Africans to, to learn to appreciate our culture, to learn to appreciate our history, and to teach our children to be able to, so that when they, when they are faced with challenges in their life in the future, they can be more resilient, knowing, knowing that their forefathers have gone through this and have overcome, and they have that ability to be able to overcome. All the last few weeks we've been looking at why Africa cannot feel itself, and that's where we are focusing on today. And today we'll be looking at, uh, we, last time we looked at uh, the geographical and environmental variables. Today we're going to look a little bit about the history of Africa, or history of humanity. I always say to people, if you take Africa out of the history of humanity, the vacuum that you will, that, uh, what, you, what will be, leave, the vacuum that you create, and what you'll be left with will be meaningless. Because from Africa, the human being emanates. Now let's go through it very quickly. He said it. Let's look at African history. Human history. Human story starts in Africa. According to the historians and archaeologists and scientists, they believe that the history of Africa dates back to modern human, to before modern human existing. And that the first fire that was lit was lit in East Africa around 2 million years ago. Now this fire that was lit became a game changer for humanity. It's a groundbreaking event that transformed the development of humanity. Because first of all, human beings can cook the food, can cook, their, can cook with it. Now somebody will ask me what is the significance of cooking? Is a lot. I always use this example that when you watch uh, geographical history, you see lion, tiger, leopard, you see them running after their prey. And when they cut the animal, they will eat it raw. You eat raw protein. And when they eat the raw protein, they will go somewhere in their den or on the tree and sleep. And they will sleep for about 10 hours. 
because the amount of energy that is required to digest raw protein is so huge that they take a big chunk out of that food and it tears it tear on its body. So they, they will sleep and allow their body to digest the protein. And when they wake up, by the time they wake up 10 hours later, the food is digested, they go and hunt again. And that's how their cycle continues. That's why lion, leopard, as intelligent as they had, they've not been able to evolve into intelligent beings. But what happened to human beings? Two million, two million, two hundred million years ago, our forefathers in Africa, in Africa, in East Africa, they lit the first fire. And immediately they lit the fire, they quickly understand that if you cook, you can use it to cook your food. What happens when you cook food? When you cook your food, you are part digesting it. So by the time you eat it, instead of taking four hours to digest, it only takes four hours to digest. Instead of taking ten hours, it takes four hours. And what happens then? The remaining hours you you have time to stay awake because your body is not busy digesting food that could have been cooked. Now, because your man is staying awake, man was able to think longer, and because man was able to think longer, they became more creative, and that's how they started inventing fish, hooks, bows, and arrow. The second thing that it the light thing made them to be able to do was to be able to warm their body. Like I said earlier, when human being was first, Africa was the first place that human being evolved because it's the only place that is suitable for people that are not, for any animal that doesn't have a lot of ears. Human beings don't have a lot of ears, so they cannot live in cold weather. So the, that's why human being emanated from, from, from Africa around the equator area. Now, as human beings discovered that they can keep themselves warm, it made it possible for human beings to be able to migrate and move to different parts of Africa, then move out of Africa into colder areas because anywhere they get to now, they, they are in control of the atmosphere. So the last time we are looking at geography, that is what is left for us in Africa. We should not say that our climate, our forefathers did not allow their climate to hold them to Africa. Once they discover lightning, they are able to move and take control of that continent using what they've learned in Africa, which is the lighting, which is the fire. All this happened before the written history. Now, climate change is one of the reasons why women left Africa. Like I said earlier, the Sahara Desert was a corridor. Before it used to be, when it was desert, human beings cannot go to the Middle East and go to Europe and go to other parts of the earth, and they cannot go on water. But like I said earlier, about 9,000 years ago, the earth, which is rotating on its same axis and rotate, revolving around the sun, wobbled. So it moved away from the sun. And as a result, that's what happened to cold age, uh, the, the cold age in Europe. But in Africa, the opposite was the effect. African Sahara Desert became a lush, became a lush area. Water and sea started passing through Africa. If you look at this picture, you see a sea crossing through a, crossing through the Sahara Desert. A good way to understand this is if you travel to the north of Nigeria, suddenly you get to a place called Lake Chad. Lake Chad is a large body of water in the middle of the desert. How did that happen? Because in the because in the past there's a what uh, the the scientists believe there's a trans Sahara Seaway of seas and ocean that pass through the Sahara Desert. And they were able to prove that because of some of the some of the skeleton of fish. I don't know what I mean if you can see this. Skelet they are able to see the, when they went to interior part of Sahara Desert, where you would not think any limit would be. They find skeleton of creatures like alligator, like large fish, like tortoise, in large like shark, in large quantity right in the middle of the desert. So they concluded that a, 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 not a river, a seaway must have passed through Africa. And that's how Lake Chad happened to have such a large amount of water right in the middle of the desert. But when the act, when the wobbling was collected, desert sprang up and because there's no more, uh, the, 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 the uh, desert sprang up and before you know it, the whole place become dry 
and has become arid like that for the last 5,000 years, years now. When the British, when the European become industrialized in 400, in 1500 AD, they didn't help because they cemented African faith. They cemented its arid because the level of pollution that came from Europe and, and America between 19, between 1400 till now has cemented the fate of Africa into becoming a desert permanently. Now, Now let's look at it. <laughs> this will lead us quickly to a big history of farming in Africa uh, around the world. The radiocarbon method concluded that the earliest food production is in Iraq and Iran. Very interesting because at the beginning of time, when human being evolved, human being was human was utter gatherer. They were going from one place that they would eat. And they settled there, they eat all the world in there, and they move on to another. But scientists have believed that uh, the first food production, the first farming that ever happened on Earth, happened around the Iraq, Iraq and Iran area. And it's so coincide, coincide with uh, the location of the Garden of Eden in the Bible. Because when you look at the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, you will hear that uh, when God created the Garden of Eden, water from Tigris and Euphrates River flow through the Garden of Eden and those water they are currently now in the in the area called Iran and Iraq in uh, in, the, in the in the Middle East. We talk about, I spoke earlier about radiocarbon metal. Radiocarbon metal is um there's nothing mysterious about it because many times we need to understand how this thing works. Now I'm not a scientist but the way they how they able to the question how they question me how they able to know that the earliest food the, let's talk a little bit about the uh, radio carbon method of measuring the scientists believe that um, when sun shines on plant plant absorb what you call carbon radio carbon 14 radio, radioactive carbon 14 and this radiocarbon 14 will remain. And if animal eat that plant, that animal too also above absorb radioactive carbon 14. When an animal eats an animal that eat that plant, that animal also absorb radiocarbon 14. Now, scientists have discovered that that radiocarbon 14 will remain in either the plant or the herbivore or the cannibal. For 5,700 years, it did not change. But after 5,700 years, the radioactive carbon 14 will change to radioactive carbon, carbon 12. And that is how scientists know how long, it, and, and, and uh, uh, how, that's how they measure radiocarbon. So any plant or animal that they find that has radioactive carbon 12. That means that animal has been around for more than 5,700 years. Don't ask me too much detail. That's just a layman way of explaining the radio carbon method of measurement. Societies are going about and, and when they found the, some food samples in the caves in Iraq and they tested it, they discovered that the earliest that they could find, the only place they could find crop animals that have radio carbon 12 is in Iraq and Iran and that's how they come to the conclusion that the first farming must have started in this area. Now if you look at the map like I was telling you earlier when I was looking at geography it's easier to understand where the Mediterranean climate will be the natural way let that place for farming to start because while it is it has all the weathers and because it's large and, and it's latitude it has a large expanse of area that have the same kind of weather unlike Africa that changes as you move down or as you move up. Scientists believe that because of the size west and east unlike Africa which is 5,000 miles the west and east of Euro-Asia 
is 10,000 miles. What does it all mean? This meant that it was easier for crop development to start in this area because the weather is very suitable and they have a large expanse of land that are flat and they don't have the rainfall challenges. Let me just put it in context to help you understand the, how come Ukraine, Ukraine, the country that we don't know, is able to go 40% of the way that we eat in Africa. It's the same reason because it's in that latitude and it has a large expanse of land. And because of their rainfall pattern, they don't have erosion challenges that we do have in Africa because it, it drizzles, not torrential rainfall. That means they can plant in a large mass of land and then I cultivate and, and, and plant. Now, why the question is why did human beings start farming? And the scientists believe that human beings start farming because it's becoming more and more difficult to find the wild fruit. So the idea of farming is that instead of 10 people going around 10,000 acres to feed themselves, they have what they use one acre to feed 10,000 people. That's the concept of farming. That is, Uber me decided that instead of going from one place to the other, let us have a place. Let's start, let, let's, let's start growing this crop and let's start seeing how they're going to perform. And uh, the, as family started, Kubami started living together. And when Kubami started living together, when you're under that ground, definitely you don't want to give back to more than one, one child every six years. Because you know you have to carry the child and you have to carry the luggage. As your wife has to carry the child and the luggage as you are moving from one place to the other. So in those in those days, when Kubami and hunter gatherers, the women of those days know how to do contraceptive and to how to not give birth within five years interval. It was when human beings started living together as a farmer and it started settling in one place that human beings started giving birth to a lot of kids, a lot of children, and a lot of children create a lot of denser population. And because they are farming together, they are able to sustain. And in summary, that's how cities emerge. Emerges. People are having denser population and people are growing together. Now, couple of things I wanted to say at this stage. One of the advantages that the Europeans have over Africa is that there's a certain group of crops that, that were able to grow better in Euro-Asia than in Africa. Africa has its own food that can grow. I'm going to try and explain it as better as I could. Now, one thing that the scientists discovered that cereal, all the cereal that we eat, None of them originally came from Africa. What are the main cereals that we eat? The first one is wheat. Wherever we make bread, it doesn't grow very. Well. It doesn't grow in Africa. It started in. It started in, in the Middle East. The second one is rice. It doesn't grow very well in Africa. Except the African rice, it also grows very well in the, in the Eurasia. The third one is barley. And you discover that these three, these three or four cereals make up 80% of the soil that goes across the world and however they are not original they, they, are, they, they don't originally grow in Africa by itself it's not that Africa do not have its own plant that grows Africa has sorghum pearl millet African rice sweet potato cassava yam plantain and banana but none of this was cereal has an advantage in that it can be produced in large quantity. Secondly, it's transferable and it has a lot of energy in it, whereby yam is very voluminous. Cassava is very voluminous. From half of cassava, when you harvest it, it's water. Wheat and rice is wheat, rice, and maize. Even maize. Many of us would think maize comes from Africa. Maize did not come from Africa. Maize came from uh, North America, from the Indians. So, what it is telling us, it tells us that most of the food that we've learned, uh, was, we talk a little about slave, uh, slavery and coloniality, most of the food that we've acquired, that we depend on to eat in Africa, are food that does not go naturally in Africa. So wheat does not go naturally in Africa. It can grow, but it will not go profitably. Rice, Asian rice, does not go profitably. Even, 
where we have alternative, we have dumb African rice at the expense of Asian rice. So, so if you start looking at some of these things, you don't begin to understand. I remember one day I went to Ghana. I went to do a training on, on African farming. And I went to this remote place and they put me in a two-star hotel. And uh, my my expectation was that in the morning, when I ask for breakfast, they're going to give me yam. And uh, probably yam and meat or yam and soup. But I'll be surprised that even in this remote, uh, Afri in the remote West African country, they asked me if I want to eat uh, bread and egg. I said, why bread? Why egg? Uh, they have, actually, they actually offered me English breakfast. And I said, why? They said, because that's what they have. So one of the reasons why Africa has not been able to feed itself is that most of the crop that we've learned to depend on, which is the wheat, the rice, the maize, they are not originally from Africa. They do grow in Africa, but they don't grow as well as in other countries. Wheat doesn't even grow very well at all in Africa. Bali doesn't grow very well in Africa. Rice doesn't, uh, Asian rice doesn't grow very well in Africa. And unfortunately, these are food that we eat most. So that when Ukraine is, there's a war in Ukraine, and they cannot bring the food to us, we are already experiencing famine already. That is one of the reasons why Africa cannot feed itself. And I believe that for Africa to develop, we need, first of all, start looking at, depending, depending on food that we can produce by ourselves, the tribe in Africa. So we start looking at food like sorghum, pearl millet, African rice, cassava, sweet potato, and start using that as the food that we consume most. Because as long as we keep on eating food that we don't produce, we will also always struggle to be able to feed ourselves. Because the country that cannot and has not self sufficient in food is always at the, at, the, at the expense of country that can sustain itself. Thank you very much. Heard what you've heard today. Please kindly subscribe to our channel. Kindly subscribe to our channel and do not forget to hit the notification bell for any new information.